Jonathan Abram wants to be a great football player. And it looks like we finally got some videos from OTAs. Uh, one video specifically, uh, that's this video here, man. Jonathan Abram showing off those smooth hips. And I know this is just a drill. It's really not a big deal. Uh, Jonathan Abram put this on his Snapchat story. Uh, but this video here t tells me a lot about the type of person Jonathan Abram is. Uh, first and foremost, this video comes from Tuesday's practice. Um, you can see it way at the top here. It says 5, 18, 21 a.m., uh, which implies it's the morning practice. Um, but you look at those smooth hips, man. You look at how quickly Jonathan Abrams turns left, he turns right, and then he turns left again. He turns around, he intercepts the pass one-handed. This video right here is a, is a fantastic video, but uh, more than just that, right? The thing I like about this video is the fact that Jonathan Abrams is going back and actually watching film. He's actually going back and, and has his focus in on getting better. You know, there's so many Raider players that in this offseason I saw making music videos, playing video games, um, trying to grow their brand. Not Jonathan Abram, man. Jonathan Abram, every single day on his Snapchat or on Instagram, whatever social media it was, every single day he was working. He was working out. Morning, uh, towards the end of the day, he's eating healthy. At the same time, he's going to see like doctors and therapists. Uh, you know, he, he was doing the, the back stuff to make sure, um, you know, all, his health is 100% right. Jonathan Abram was 1,000% putting in all the effort this offseason. And during the actual season, right, the season's here now. During the actual season, Jonathan Abram is still putting in that work. Like, this isn't him at the facility. This is him at his house. And he is watching film. He is watching what he did in practice to get better. I love this about Jonathan Abram, man. You know, there's one thing that a very wise man once told me. That was, if you want to be great, you have to practice and put the effort in to be great. You won't be handed anything in life ever. It's not realistic. Uh, people look at LeBron James, for example, and say LeBron James is just physically gifted, and that's why he's a great, great uh, player in general. Uh, but that's not true. LeBron James put in so much work and so much effort to be a great basketball player. There's so many people out there. Uh, and I wouldn't say so many, right? But there are hundreds of people out there that have the same body type as LeBron James. Uh, but to get that quick and that fast, you have to put that effort in from a young age. Um, Jonathan Abram is putting the effort in, man. The whole entire offseason, the season's here, he's putting it in still. And I love it, man. I absolutely love it. Now, just talking about the video specifically, uh, a couple things I noticed. Uh, one, you see Arnett's head here at the bottom of the screen, his... Uh, his hair is very noticeable. Um, another thing I noticed is obviously this is without pads, right? And that's going to make him look much bigger. It's going to make him look much faster. Um, at the same time, you know, he does look quicker. His hips look more fluid. But again, it's all without pads, right? He doesn't have the shoulder pads. He doesn't have uh, his hip pads, his butt pads, his knee pads, his thigh pads. Um, you know, he's, his helmet, right? Helmet's probably the biggest thing that could probably slow someone down. Uh, so with all that, it is going to allow him to move more fluid and I don't really have a video of comparing him uh, before right like I, I don't know how he looked like without pads in the past uh, maybe I should have done some research but um, either way another thing I kind of noticed is as the camera kind of zooms out there's a lot of people back here man uh, now obviously that doesn't look like that's 70 people which was uh, the initial reports and now it's actually reported that about 95% of the team's there uh, at this point, the only members of the team that aren't there are, are people who are like either on vacation or they're kind of getting, they're late to get to um, OTAs. But I think pretty much we'll see 100% of people there in the next day or two, man. I, I really do think that um, it's interesting to see, like, you know, I wonder where the offensive linemen are, the defensive linemen, the linebackers, you know, obviously you kind of see everybody practicing here. Um, but either way, I, I think this video kind of just shows that Jonathan Abrams putting the effort in, man. And then, of course, you see that one-handed interception all the way at the end of the video. Uh, but yeah, man, I, I love the fact that Jonathan Abram is putting that effort in. It, it really does mean a lot for me personally because I do believe that practice makes perfect. I do believe every single rep makes you that much better. And he's out there and, and, and he's working, man. At the, top, at the end of the day, he's also watching that film uh, to better himself. Uh, now... I'm not huge into rumors, and I really don't like to talk about rumors, uh, especially with Julio Jones, but I, I have done one video of Julio in the past, and I told myself I'm not going to do another one, but here's the thing, right? 
Uh, it looks like Julio Jones will be traded. Uh, Jeff Schultz is a really good insider, and he writes the Falcons would like to trade Julio Jones. That doesn't mean it's 100% going to happen. Um, that's very, very interesting, man, because Julio Jones is a fantastic wide receiver. I know he's 31. The Falcons just, just drafted Kyle Pitts. They already have Calvin Ridley. But Julio Jones is still Julio Jones. I, I don't know why the Falcons want to trade him. Now, for the Raiders, I would not mind giving up a first-round pick for Julio Jones. And I know that's a lot to give up. But if you look at some of our past first-round picks, how good have they really been? On top of that, I want you guys to think about this. Julio Jones needs to be bracketed. There's no way you guard him without bracketing him because if it's third and six, he's going to catch the ball. On top of that, Darren Waller has to be bracketed. Could you guys imagine Darren Waller on, you know, right there playing the slot, Julio Jones on the left side of the field and hanging rugs all the way to the right side of the field? How do you stop that? Who do you bracket? You can't. You don't have enough players to bracket both Julio Jones and Darren Waller. You have a top five wide receiver and a top three tight end. That's very difficult to stop. Again, I know a first round pick is a lot to give up for a player like Julio Jones. And realistically speaking, I don't know if, if he would fit within the cap, to be honest, because I don't really know what his cap figures are. Um, but it does make a ton of sense from the perspective that our offense would be unstoppable. Like we would have a top five offense from a playmaking perspective. At the end of the day, the Raiders are missing a true number one wide receiver. Julio is 31, but he didn't look slower last year. Like he still looked very, very good. And I do understand that he is on the back end of his career. He has three years left. Uh, this will be the best year of his three years. Next year will be the second best. And then that third year, it'll probably be a, a sharp decline. Uh, but players are lasting longer. Julio Jones is genetically gifted. And I do think his, um, you know, his work ethic and the amount of effort he puts into it will allow him to play maybe a little bit longer. Maybe he plays until he's 34. Either way, if the Raiders can get two or three years out of Julio Jones, why not? Who are we going to draft in the first round anyways? And if we make a Super Bowl push, right, playoff run, uh, maybe we win two games in the playoffs, maybe we get to the Super Bowl, uh, we would be picking somewhere in the late first round anyways. And at that point, does it really matter? Like, I would rather have a great offense, a fun, explosive offense, uh, and Julio Jones would give that to us, man. And I know people will say, well, we have Brian Edwards, uh, which is true. But if Brian Edwards is who Brian Edwards is, he'll pick up a ton from Julio Jones. Like, they're a very similar type of player. Brian Edwards can only get better if you bring in a guy like Julio Jones. If Brian Edwards is the guy, let him compete for it, man. Let, don't don't just give him a bone. Let him compete for, him, for it. Let him win the job out. Um, I would be very excited to bring in julio jones you know earlier when the news first hit i was like i don't know if i would even give up a second round pick for him i'd be now willing to give up a first round my opinion has completely shifted uh, i do think the raiders roster is a very good roster especially after the draft i think we're right there man i, I really do think that uh in some other news uh, there's going to be a race between four super fast human beings that's justin jefferson devin white henry ruggs and mccall hardman uh, the race will be later on today. In fact, I don't know if it's already been posted. Let me just look at it really quickly. Uh, so I don't see it being posted, which is fine. Um, but yeah, you got four guys. The race is already over technically, right? So it's already been dropped. Uh, they're doing a 40-yard dash to see who's the quickest. I, and I think they'll probably end up doing a little bit more than just a 40. I, I could see them doing like a 70-yard sprint as well because 40 doesn't really give you you know, that, that, you know, the last, in the 40 yard run, maybe the last like 15 yards is when they're at like full speed. Um, I would love to see them go like 60, 70 yards. Now here's the thing. Um, Henry Ruggs has ran a 4-2. McCall Hardman, I think was a 4-3-1. Um, Justin Jefferson, I think is a fourth in the four threes as well. Devin White, I think was a 4-4 or maybe he was a four, late 4-3. Four These guys are all super fast human beings, man. And what's crazy is I wanted Devin White so badly uh, could you guys, could you, would you guys be surprised if Devin White wins this race? Now, I want you guys to think about this. There's not a big difference between running a 4-4 and a 4-2-9. Like, it's really not that big of a difference. Like, that right there is, like, that difference of, like, that 0.1 or 0.2. Now, I know, like, in the bigger scheme of things of, like, a 40-yard dash, I know it does add up, and I know it does make a difference. Um, obviously, you look at someone like Devin White, he probably doesn't get off as quickly as someone like Henry Ruggs, who's a little bit lighter. 
but it'll be interesting to see man Devin White I don't think is that slow of a football player Justin Jefferson's very quick as well I'm pumped up to see this obviously um it hasn't been posted yet I'm gonna assume they'll post it in the next hour or two maybe I'll do another video later on today just to kind of discuss these results because I'm really fired up for this man I, I really am um, lastly, I want to talk to you guys about this. Has the Raiders roster improved since John Gruden has taken over? The answers may surprise you. Let's let's look over what the Athletic puts out there. Um, let's look at this, man. Quarterback, if you look at our quarterbacks, obviously Derek is still Derek. Uh, but the two difference is in 2017, EJ Manuel and Connor Cook in 2021, Marcus Mariota and Nathan Peterman. Obviously, our running backs, our quarterbacks are better in 2021. Same thing with our running backs. It's it, I don't think it's really close. I, don't think, I think Josh Jacobs and Kenyon Drake are definitely better than Marshawn Lynch, who at that point was way into the end of his career. Uh, and Jalen Richard, of course, uh, Kenyon Drake is better. Um, yeah, man, and you see it right here. Edge, clearly 2021. Let's jump forward. Let's get into the receiving group. There's no question, man. There's zero question about this. Um, 2017 is better. Like, there's just no way. Michael Crabtree, I know he was towards the end of his career, but he still had a very productive year. Amari Cooper is the best receiver among all these people. Even in 2017, Amari Cooper was the best wide receiver. Um, obviously, Amari Cooper is today a top seven wide receiver, and I think the Raiders should have kept him. I know we did technically trade him for, um, uh, for Jonathan Abram, right? That was the technical trade. Mari Cooper went for a fresh round pick, with, which the Raiders used for Jonathan Abram. Uh, and I would have Abram over Mari Cooper for sure, because I think receivers are more easily to replace. Uh, but I would have loved to keep Amari Cooper, assuming maybe we get uh, Abram some other way, right? Uh, either way, I think 2017 was better. <clears throat> um, this one's interesting, man, because our tight end group in 2017 was not bad. Like, Jared Cook was a good football player. Uh, but it's clear Darren Waller and Foster Moreau are better. You know, John Gruden talked about Foster Moreau recently in a video. <clears throat> in that video, he talked about um, he he talked about how he thinks Foster Moreau is gonna be a great football player. Um, I think it was a video with Eric Allen. I believe that's what it was. Uh, and they talked. He you know he he mentioned Foster Moreau and he talked about his uh, run blocking. You know about how he needs to get down on this guy. Um, either way, it was an interesting video and. I think 2017 is not as good as the 2021 tight end. Uh, offensive line, here's the thing, right? Uh, <laughs> Richie Incognito is a great football player, but outside of that, I think at every other position, 2017 was better. Maybe not Colton Miller, I don't know. Donald Penn was a great football player, right? Um, the thing is, is that offensive line was different than the 2021 offensive line. Um, in 2021, we're way more scheme specific, right? Tom Cable's guys, these are Tom Cable's guys. So even though 2017 was better from an individual perspective, I think the 2021 offensive line as a unit will end up being better. I really do believe in that. Um, let's jump forward. Uh, defensive line. I don't even want to talk about this one uh, because we had Cleo Mack in 2017, man. That, that one still stings a little bit, but... Uh, I would say outside of Khalil Mack, right, if you took Khalil Mack and you removed Yannick Nagagwe, right, just move the two best guys, um, I would say between the rest of the guys, it's close, man. I, I think Crosby and Burrow and Kendall Vickers, I think, you know, those guys can hold their own. Now, I will say this, we had Danico Autry, who, although he didn't play that well, even Trayvon Hester, I'm pretty sure he's still in the NFL. Even though, and even Mario Edward Jr., I'm pretty sure he's in the NFL as well. Todd Ward, I think, is with the Ravens. Um, even though these guys were not who they were at that time, those guys are perfectly fine football players. Um, I do think that the 2021 defensive line might be a little bit better, uh, obviously minus Cleo Mack, just for the sole purpose of we're much deeper this year. Um, and at the same time, those players like uh, Vanderdos and Edwards and Nico Autry, they weren't who they are today, right? And I don't think Vanderdose is in the NFL anymore, but um, that one's close. Maybe you give 27 in the edge because those guys, at least we know what they are today. Uh, linebackers, um, it's interesting. You know, I love Navarro Bowman. He was one of my favorite uh, football players ever, right? Like, and I know he was with the Niners for most of his career, uh, and I liked him with the Niners, right? And that, that's kind of what I'm touching on. Uh, Bruce Irvin, um, Bo, uh, Navarro Bowman. Mauro, Corey James, Markel Lee, James Kowser, Shalik Calhoun, Tyrell Adams. These are some good linebackers. I, I would give the edge to 2021.
honestly, I, I think our guys are better this year. Like, you know, you look at Corey Littleton and what he's already done, right? You look at guys that are established, plus Navarro Bowman was on the back end of his career. I think that was actually his last season he ever played. Um, now, we do have some unproven guys, right? But I would say 2021 for sure. Um, 2017 versus 2021 as far as corners. That one's tough. I, I would probably agree with the author and say slightly to 2021. Um, you know, our, our corners were really not that good in 2017, but they're not really that good in 2021 either, right? Um, as far as safeties, it's not comparable, man. Like, our 2021 safeties are much better. We have two guys. Like, our best safety was, what, Carl Joseph? And he's on our team now, right? So, like, I don't see it being that big of a difference, but we have Merrick, Abrams, Gillespie. Uh, 2021, I think, by a landslide. Um, as far as special teams, I mean, I love Marquette King. I think he was a great punter. Obviously, I didn't work out for him. Um, it's special teams, right? Let's, I don't know. I, I, we can give that to whomever. Um, but what do you guys think about this, man? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button. Smash that subscribe button. I will have another video for you guys for sure later on today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys next time with another video.